All right, good morning, everyone. Well, at least it's morning for me. Um, today I had a different kind of episode than our normal episode. Welcome back to Garden Fever, by the way. I'm Corey Lefevre, I'm coming to you from Northern Utah. But today I got a little different of an ep kind of episode than what we normally do. Um, I got a lot of requests, or not requests, but questions lately about uh, a lot of questions on things that can harm your plants. And I haven't done a whole lot of stuff on that. I've done a lot on growing plants and how to grow them and blah blah blah. But not a whole lot on um, some of the things that can hurt and harm your plants. So I decided to do an episode today on the top five in my opinion, the top five things that are most harmful or most damaging to your garden or your house plants. And I almost did six. One of them's kind of, I decided to make it kind of an honorable mention, if you will. But we're gonna break it down to five and I decided to do it in my rhubarb because they actually have a good example of one of the things that I'm gonna talk about. So with that, we'll go ahead and get into it. Uh, we'll start with number five. And number five is general plant care. Um, and that, what I mean by that is uh, uh, how you take care of your plant. Um, I put this at the least because knowledge is power. And if you know the basic needs of the plant, you won't run into this. <clears throat> and that's like what kind of, how much light it needs, how much water it needs. Uh, is it warm weather? Is it cold weather? Is, you know, it, is it acidic soil? Is it alkaline soil? You know, is it neutral soil? Those kind of things. And uh, without knowing the conditions that it grows best in it's real easy to to overwater and kill your plant or put it in a place that doesn't get enough sun and it, and it doesn't do well and, and so number five is your general plant care so it's always a good idea to kind of look at your plant and just kind of have some basic knowledge of it for one for example how much sun it needs how much water it needs and the most optimal temperatures in which you need it to grow for example, you don't want to put a tomato out in 40 degree weather. However, you can put lettuce in 40, you know, degree weather. So, and even rhubarb for that for that matter. Uh, number two uh, is uh, would be uh, weather. And what I mean by that is weather doesn't always cooperate with our gardens. Uh, we, you can have a late snow, a late frost. You can have an early snow, an early frost. You can have a hailstorm, a windstorm, lightning storm, a tornado. Uh, you know, I mean, the weather's very can be very destructive to your plants. So it's always a good idea to kind of have an eye on the weather. You know, at least in the back of your mind, it gives you a better time when you should should plant and when you shouldn't, and that kind of thing. And that kind of brings me to this, and I'm going to show you an example. But I don't know if you can see from this, so I'll bring one up closer. But all these holes that you see in my rhubarb here was from a hailstorm. Uh, we've had some strange weather here in Utah. It's getting towards the end of April, but it was 33 degrees, not last night, but the night before. Last night was around, barely, I think it barely reached 40. Uh, we've had some late frost and a ton of rain, weeks of rain without any sun. In fact, it's great today. This is the first real dose of sun we've had in a long time. But we had a hailstorm come through, and I'm gonna show you this. Let me reach down here and pull this off so you can get an idea let me make sure this is focused for you but see all those holes look at that it just riddled my my rhubarb leaves so weather is a is is definitely something that is that can do damage to your plants it, it can blow them over it can or you can get like an extreme drought where you have a, a, a wave of heat and no rain and that can cause some serious damage to your uh, plants too so it's always a good idea to keep an eye on the weather <clears throat> number three and this is where my kind of my where my honorable mention falls into but we'll, we'll talk about three first three is pests and everybody knows about grasshoppers everybody knows about slugs these things can do some serious damage to your to your garden uh, learning tips and tricks on how to manage them uh, there's all kinds of YouTube videos out there, and I'm not doing a YouTube video per se on, on pest prevention, but it's it's a good idea to kind of experiment and, and do some homework on what pests are eating your plants. You know, for example, slugs love leafy greens. They devastate my cucumbers, my, my spinach, my mustard chard, my 
uh, my squash leaves. They just totally hammer it. And I did a video last week on something that I found out that was attracting slugs. So it's always a good idea to kind of experiment and learn. And, I, and you know, once you kind of gain that knowledge, you can kind of guard against it. I don't think you're ever going to 100% prevent any pest damage. At some point, a grasshopper is going to get in. At some point, a slug's going to get in. You know, a squash bug, and you're never going to 100% guard against that. So you just want to have a deterrent. You want a defense against it. That way, it's minimalized to its minimalist. You can always use things like neem oil and, and things like that. That'll help. But that kind of comes along with my honorable mention. I'm going to talk about that now, and that's uh, fungus diseases and, and molds and, and, and root rot and, you know, powder mildew and things like that. Those kind of diseases kind of fall in that same category. They're they're not uh, they're not uh, pests, but they're 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 pesty in a way, and that uh, can be prevented by various means. Um, uh, and that then brings me to, and ironically enough, the fourth one. And it came right up in time. And that's pets. This is Chi Chi, by the way. I love her to death. Uh, pets are very destructive to your yard and garden. Um, and, I, and I'm keeping it in mind to the two most popular pets. And that's cats and dogs. Obviously, if you have, I don't know, a gerbil or a fish tank, that's not going to be too damaging to your garden. But cats and dogs and pigs and chickens and various things like that. Although you can use like chicken poop as fertilizer or to control bugs, they will eat your crops like that. And cats will dig and, and go to the bathroom in your soil. Um, dogs, same thing. They'll go all over the yard. They'll dig. They'll tear up your yard. Pet, uh, pets are very destructive. Now you can kind of train them. There are preventative me uh, measures you can take, obviously, uh, but uh, they are very damaging. So with dogs, you know, put up a fence around your garden. With with uh, you know ducks, you want to keep them kind of contained in a coop, or you want to—I forget what it's called—where you you use chicken wire and you create a path for them so they can run around and eat all the bugs and the weeds but not your actual crops and then you move that along while they dig in the soil and turn up your soil and then they poop on the soil they're fertilizing it but they're not actually being able to reach your your crops themselves so there's just a few examples there's lots of ideas out there and maybe in the future I'll do more specific to, to each one but today we're keeping it kind of general so that leads me to my fifth or not fifth the number one I, I did it backwards sorry the number one in my opinion the most destructive thing the most damage I've seen to my garden has come from what I love the most and that's my children kids are absolutely destructive to your garden now obviously within a certain age you know roughly five six seven maybe they're not gonna be too bad because you can teach them you can reason with them if they're well-behaved kids, you can kind of keep them out of your flower garden. But from one to, you know, like, let's say four or five, absolutely devastating. My kids will beat them up. They'll dump their orange juice and, and grape juice and soda on it. They'll, they'll play Godzilla to my garden. And they do it every day, and you can't just micromanage them and yell at them. Uh, I've got some examples of some of the destructive power of my children. I love my kids to death. But I had to really take a step back when I first decided to have kids and, and understand that damage to my plants was inevitable. There's no way you're going to completely keep kids from messing with your plants. So, you know, I, I've been treating my kids to, to pick off red tomatoes rather than green tomatoes and to eat goji berries. And, and my son, he's getting a little older, he's getting better at it, but uh, they still, they'll walk right through all my start, pull my starts out dump my pots over inside my house and <laughs> I've seen everything stick toys in it you name it it's happened uh, I've even found plant pieces of plants stuffed in my shoe if that gives you an example so they're awesome I love kids but uh, if you're gonna have them and you 
can't fence off your garden or whatever to take measures to protect them. You need to understand that damage is just inevitable. There's nothing you can do. So with that, that'll conclude our, our top five list. Um, maybe in the future I'll do a, a breakdown on some methods on how you can guard against those, those things. But those are definitely the, the top, in my opinion, the top five things with the honorable mention uh, that will hurt your garden. It's, it's going to happen. So with that, I'll let you go for now. Uh, I wanted to take a special note to all my brand new subscribers. Uh, this spring I had quite a bit of a wave. I mean, I'm by far not a, a, a famous YouTuber, if you will. But I've had a lot of more response this year than I have in previous in the previous year. I'm very thankful for that. So you guys are awesome. Um, if you have any ideas or comments, or you would like me to do a video on a specific plant that maybe you're struggling with, or you would like to grow, uh, uh, just leave a comment or email me. It'll be in the description, and share things with me. If you know stuff about about this that I don't, please share it. I mean, I I, I don't know everything. No one knows everything together we can know everything so with that i'll let you go and thanks for watching